So before we move on to the other maps, totally forgot to add in one extra detail for these maps here, and it's the eyebrows. So what I'm going to do is, what I want is, I want these eyebrows to be more reflective than the skin. However, if we were to bring up some of these reference images, we don't necessarily want it to reflect like the skin. They have a really tight highlight. This might be a better example. And even these here, you can't really see much of a highlight there. Same with uh, her eyebrows here. So the point being, I actually don't want these to reflect at all in this map here. So I'm going to multiply those and then invert them. Like so. I'm going to duplicate it once so we can get even more. So we can double it up and make sure it's really dark just on those eyebrows. So in this spec map, because it's going to be a bit broader, I don't want it to reflect. Uh, in fact, I want the opposite. Because I want that tight reflection to be reserved for this other map that I'm about to paint, which is the what we call the secondary spec map, or the wetness spec, or uh, grease spec, oil spec, whatever you want to call it. But it's going to be in a mask form, so it's not going to have much information in it. Uh, it's going to be a black and white mask that drives the component quality, so the oiliness of the skin. It's going to drive that quality, the, the component, uh, based off of this mask that we're about to paint. So I'm going to go to my channels, and I'm going to create a new channel. I'm going to just call this, uh, it's really arbitrary really, you can just call it whatever I'm going to call it, oil mask, and set it to black, okay. And what I like to do is, my shader, turn this all the way up, and the roughness all the way up, so we can just see the forms on pure black. It's easier to see, rather than having it like that, or obviously no spec at all, you can't really see what's going on. And I'm going to hide the eyes. So the basis of this map is actually, I like to start with my ambient occlusion. So let's see if I can pick that up from a channel we've already developed. So there is an AO in here, so I'm going to copy that, go to my oil mask, and paste it. Taking a second. There we go. So I'm going to blow away that mask. And hide the levels adjustment. Like so. Actually, I'm going to go in here. So what I want to do is I want to invert this. Because uh, by default, it's going to give me really most of the areas I'm looking for, which is really nice. I'm going to delete that levels. And the areas I'm concentrating on are what we discussed earlier inside the ears, and around the eyelids, inside the nose. Although we want to probably take that out of the nose, as explained before, we don't want to get any uh, stray highlights in the nose. It's going to look kind of weird. But inside the lips, around the nose, this is really close but we want to do some adjusting because we don't want it behind the head. We want a little bit more in the T-zone. But like I said, it's a very close start. So I like to start with the AO and see what I get. Um, I'm actually going to reintroduce that levels because I want to brighten it up a bit.
like so. And then with a mask, I'll reveal all. And now it's just the simple process of painting out some of these unwanted areas. So I'm going to start with the neck. I'm going to do a paint through. Just paint it out. So as mentioned previously in, in the workshop demos, as a texture painter for feature films, we rely quite heavily on these secondary maps, these isolation maps, these masks, whatever you want to call them, in order to achieve the results that you see on screen. It's not as simple as just doing a color displacement spec and calling it a day. Uh, there's so much more fine tweaking that happens, more iterations that happens, and a lot more um, deliberate painting that happens in order to get the photo real results. So I want you guys to keep that in mind when you're painting for feature film. That your job isn't done when you're done with the color displacement spec. Uh, a lot of the times, um, especially if I have a good working relationship with my look dev artist, I'll sit down with them and just spitball ideas of things I want, I want, I want to achieve in the paint and ultimately in the look dev. And then sit with him or her and discuss the best possible route for that in terms of what kind of masks we need to paint um, and what other kind of details we need to get in there. Um, so it's a very much organic process for organic painting that I think some people aren't aware of when they start doing it. So I'm going to grab the head here and just to be quick about it, I'm just going to paint through and aim up. Just paint all that out inside the nose. Probably the quickest way to get that done. So I encourage you guys to build a good working relationship with your look dev artists if you have them uh, because nothing's worse than not being able to communicate what you want and then seeing it look dev in a way that wasn't exactly what you had in mind especially when you're painting. It's always important to keep all the reference that you, that you collect um, so you have kind of, I wouldn't call it ammunition, but you have backup when it comes down to it and, you know, a discussion happens about the look. You can bring up these images and say, hey, the, this is what I was pulling from. This is what I had in mind. Uh, I find it much more successful when you have that stuff going in. Go. Take some of this out in the chin. For now, may add it back in. But for now, I want to take that out. Oh, I left paint through on, but actually that's okay because it's black. Um, that's kind of you want to make sure. Be wary of when you turn that on and turn it off because that could really trip you up if you're doing some painting and then 10-15 minutes later you realize you had that paint through on the whole time. 
just be uh, cautious. Fade this in a little bit. Cause I don't really want it to stand too far out. Same on this side. And another nice thing about having a good relationship with your elective artist is that you can actually forge new new things. You can create new things. I remember when I was painting Spirit of the West for Rango, uh, the current skin shader, the model that they had, was taking subdermal color maps and, and molting them in to the epidermal, which achieved a really strange result that wasn't uh, representative of what I was painting. And so in the past, they build up this really strange, you know, counterproductive and counterintuitive method of of getting skin to look right. And I just sat down with my looktive artist and said, listen, this is all I want this subdermal map to do. I just basically want to do kind of, instead of a malt, I want to do kind of like an overlay or soft light. And 10 minutes, he looked at the shader code, and it was just one line he had to change. And it fixed everything. And we were able to render that guy and final him very very quickly so having a good working relationship with your looktive artist can really uh, create some new things pioneer some uh, new methods or just update methods that are kind of out of date so I'm gonna continue to fade this back a bit I don't want it to creep up too high this map is pretty sensitive uh, when you plug it in, so it's going to read pretty strong. Again, this is a, a basis. This is I'm just going to start with this in a production environment. I'd hand this off to look dev, have them render it and see how it works, and then we discuss ways to optimize it uh, if it isn't working. As you can see, the real advantage of Mari here is being able to paint like this around the model. Uh, painting masks in the past were really tedious and time consuming because you couldn't tumble like you can in Mari and just paint and paint and paint. So this makes it much, much easier. Uh, I'm going to go to a split view and then get a little bit more out of the eyes. So, Right now I've only been painting the mask. So now I want to go in and add in some more wetness or oil. So the best way to do that is to create a new channel. And I'm going to fill it with pure white. So just fill the whole thing. Patches, fill, gets cut off. Let's go from the top. Patches, fill, white. And then I'm going to hide the entire layer. And now from here, I want to paint into this new mask up here. Oops. Make sure I have the mask selected. So this is just additional. So I can further tweak. And again, non-destructive. So if I've gone too far, it's an easy fix.
I'll go back to this mask here. Got some clipping from a projection. I'm just going to paint out from that mask. There we go. So I want some a good deal of wetness around the eyes. Make it look real nice and oily. Like so. Now onto the nose. We're going to knock this way down. So painting in the nose area. Again, just keeping it subtle. Like so. And it's okay if it's a bit blotchy. That's actually going to help create a little bit more variation. We don't want too much on the cheeks, but just something really slight, like so. And then again, super slight on the forehead. Because obviously there's a lot of different degrees of oiliness skin has. And that's another thing I want you guys to think about and take a look at the reference that you've gathered is how oily is the skin that you're trying to achieve actually look. Um, like me being Asian, our skin gets very oily very quickly, so we have a lot of oil to our skin, whereas Caucasian skin kind of a little bit less oily, more dry. Um, African American skin is again oily, so keep that in mind. So when I was painting this guy, I, I equated his skin more to African American skin in terms of the dark tones, so I made him um, a little bit more oily than maybe you would have for a Caucasian. So these are all informed decisions. I'll go in here, paint up the lips. And clean up that occlusion that didn't really bake properly. And then fade it up. So we get some nice wetness on those lips. So I like doing it in the UV view because it's a bit easier to control in the beginning. But ultimately I'll go back to the 3D view to clean it up. But I'll try to get as close as I can in 2D. Like so. And then I'll go to this view and shape it up. Turn on specularity to see where this edge lines up. So 
not too far over. Like so. There we go, this is a pretty good start. Again, this is just getting it into the ballpark. And from there we're gonna finesse more once from in a production perspective once we get it into look dev and seeing how it all plays. Just went a little bit too high there. There we go. So this is a very good basis for our oiliness. And we're intentionally keeping it very broad because again this map is very sensitive and we want those big swoops of gradation like so. Great. So in the next section we're going to go over another set of maps that I like to paint uh, that'll further this along for the photoreal result we're looking for.